O God, when you went forth before your people, marching with them and living among them, the earth trembled, heavens poured down rain. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. That antiphon doesn't really describe today another beautiful sunny day, a day on which we again are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. But the resurrection of Jesus was an event that happened in one place at one time. Others needed to be told about it. The mystery of the death and resurrection of the Lord needed to be unfolded to others. And Jesus himself knew this. He sent his disciples out. As we continue our Easter journey, we think more and more of that missionary activity of the church, spreading out from Jerusalem to every place in the world. We think of how we are part of that today, how we can take Christ to others so that they may know what he has done for us. As we prepare to celebrate Mass then first, we ask his forgiveness for all our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who restore human nature to yet greater dignity than at its beginnings, look upon the amazing mystery of your loving kindness and in those you have chosen to make new through the wonder of rebirth, may you preserve the gifts of your enduring grace and blessing. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and his friends went by sea from Paphos to Perga in Pamphylia, where John left them to go back to Jerusalem. The others carried on from Perga until they reached Antioch in Pisidia. Here they went to synagogue on the Sabbath and took their seats. After the lessons from the law and the prophets had been read, the presidents of the synagogue sent them a message. Brothers, if you would like to address some words of encouragement to the congregation, please do so. Paul stood up, held up a hand for silence and began to speak. Men of Israel and fearers of God, listen. The God of our nation Israel chose our ancestors and made our people great when they were living as foreigners in Egypt. Then by divine power, he led them out and for about 40 years, took care of them in the wilderness. When he had destroyed seven nations in Canaan, he put them in possession of their land for about 450 years. After this, he gave them judges down from the prophet Samuel. Then they demanded a king and God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin. After 40 years, he deposed him and made David their king, of whom he approved in these words, I have selected David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will carry out my whole purpose. To keep his promise, God has raised up for Israel one of David's descendants, Jesus, as Saviour, whose coming was heralded by John when he proclaimed a baptism of repentance for the whole people of Israel. Before John ended his career, he said, I am not the one you imagine me to be. That one is coming after me and I am not fit to undo his sandal. The Word of the Lord. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. 
I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. Through all ages my mouth will proclaim your truth. Of this I am sure, that your love lasts forever, that your truth is firmly established as the heavens. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. I have found David my servant, and with my holy oil anointed him. My hand shall always be with him, and my arm shall make him strong. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My truth and my love shall be with him. By my name his might shall be exalted. He will say to me, You are my Father, my God, the rock who saves me. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. Hallelujah. You, O Christ, are the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead. You have loved us and have washed away our sins with your blood. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you most solemnly, no servant is greater than his master, no messenger greater than the man who sent him. Now that you know this, happiness will be yours if you behave accordingly. I'm not speaking about all of you. I know the ones I have chosen. But what scripture says must be fulfilled. Someone who shares my table rebels against me. I tell you this now, before it happens, so that when it does happen, you may believe that I am he. I tell you most solemnly, whoever welcomes the one I send, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I wonder if the observant among you out there watching noticed something was different in our first reading this morning. Yesterday we were hearing about Saul and Barnabas and yet suddenly today we find Paul. We know this is the same person, this Saul, who we met a couple of weeks ago. Remember the execution of Saint Stephen. The witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man called Saul. And we know then that Saul began a fierce persecution of the church until that moment on the road to Damascus when Jesus spoke to him and Saul became a believer. He was baptised in Damascus and then went on to be one of the most powerful disciples, one of the most powerful missionaries in the church. The reason that his name changes, well lots of people give various reasons, but it's probably because he had two names. Living in that time, he was part of a very varied culture. It was a culture that was Jewish, that was Greek, and that was Roman. And the name Paul is probably his Greek name. Saul is his Jewish name. Now that's important because of what happens in the reading today. Having been in Cyprus and having preached and worked a miracle there, Paul now travels to Turkey, what we now call Turkey, to a place called Antioch in Pisidia. It's a little town that's still there and there's a Byzantine church there which the archaeologists have excavated and found underneath a first century building which they reckon is the synagogue mentioned in the reading that we've heard today. But why is all this significant and what's it got to do with Saul's name change? It's in Antioch in Pisidia that there's going to be a huge shift in the missionary work of the church. As we hear Paul goes to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Remember, he is a Jewish leader, a preacher, a Pharisee. And so obviously visiting, people say, oh, who are you? Oh, you've come from Jerusalem. All oh, right. Will you say a few words? When the time comes for what we would call the homily, after the reading of the scriptures, the leaders of the synagogue say to Paul, come on, you give us a little bit of a word of encouragement. And this is Paul's cue to preach Jesus. 
but he does it very carefully. He starts off by going back to the Old Testament, all the way back to Egypt, all the way back to Exodus, talking about the beginning of the monarchy, the first king of Israel, Saul, and then David. And this promise that a descendant of David would be Israel's saviour. This is when he introduces who Jesus is. So Paul is very much talking to that Jewish congregation in the synagogue. But what we'll hear later on this week is that that message is rejected. And so it's in Antioch in Pisidia that Paul then turns to what the Acts of the Apostles normally call the pagans. In other words, non-Jews, Greeks, perhaps Romans, the different traders and the different people who live in that town. And this marks a huge shift from the gospel simply being proclaimed to the chosen people of Israel, a universality is emerging. Paul breaks the barriers and proclaims that anyone can believe in Jesus. And perhaps that's why the name shifts. Saul was the name he used when he was preaching to his brothers and sisters of Israel, something that he never gave up throughout his whole career. But now as he's preaching to the Greeks, he uses Paul, his Greek name. We're going to be following St Paul through all his adventures for the rest of Eastertide, all the way up to Pentecost. It's worth digging out your copy of the Bible and looking at the Acts of the Apostles. It's even worth things like getting out a map, or nowadays, of course, we probably do it online on Google Maps, and looking for those places that Paul visited. Many of them still exist today in Cyprus, in Turkey, in Greece, and of course, Rome itself. As we follow his journey, as we think about all the different towns and places that St Paul visited, perhaps it's a reminder to us of the words of Jesus in the Gospel. He said, whoever welcomes the one I send welcomes me. Paul believed that he was sent by Jesus to speak to as many different places, as many people as possible. And those who welcomed him and his word were welcoming Jesus into their lives. Let us pray two things that we may always welcome the word of Jesus into our own homes, especially at this time, but also that each one of us may think of how we are sent, perhaps not physically sent to travel like St Paul did, but certainly sent to, to be Christ in our world, to let his word speak through us, through our acts of kindness and care and concern for others, through all that we can do in order to let Jesus be known. Whoever welcomes us as the ones that he sends, welcomes him. Let's think of our prayers for Mass today. And first, let us pray for all missionaries working throughout the whole world, for those who, like St Paul, give their lives in order to carry the message of Jesus to those who have not yet heard it. We pray for their strength and resilience, especially in this time of global pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let us pray for ourselves, even though we are locked in our homes, we are still able to proclaim Jesus to the world through our acts of kindness and charity, through our phone calls and greetings, through the things that we can do for others. Let us pray that we may be strong in bearing witness to him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for a moment in silence, let each of us think of our own prayers and intentions. All-powerful Father, who sent your Son into the world to open to us believers a new way of living, grant that we may accept his word and proclaim him to others, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth, are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mere history of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Now at the Saviour's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, 
who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Regina Celi, Letare, Alleluia. Quia, quem meru isti portare, Alleluia. Resurrexit, sicut dixit, Alleluia. Ora pro nobis Deum, Alleluia.